up guys welcome to flex friday this week recording is going to be a little different from now on we're using a different streaming platform so please stick with us uh we got andy in the flesh this week though we don't just have andy's voice so andy welcome back in man it's nice to see your face on the screen thanks man it is nice to be out of the alaskan wilderness though i will say i think the uh the sea breeze and the the crisp air and the uh, grunting bears just uh you know helped bring the uh, fantasy football juices to fruition that I had. So hopefully down in uh, New Mexico, Colorado, the winds moving through the canyons will do the same this week. We'll find out. Yeah, I mean, sometimes being removed from like too much information helps. To be honest with fantasy stuff, I, I remember when yeah. I first started playing, I used to listen to a bunch of stuff and do all these things. And now I, I've kind of minimized it down and I've found I make better uh choices to be honest so uh yeah yeah sometimes just listening to your gut like the worst thing is you have a feeling to play a player and you don't do it and they go off on your bench and there's something freeing about just i mean literally staying in a cabin with no internet for five nights in a row and uh not being able to shower and just being like you know what who do i like for fantasy this week and so yeah yeah so to kick this off, uh, if you guys haven't been to the channel before, Andy and I would give you some flex players, a couple streamers to end the show with. Uh, but Andy's going to kick us off uh, with a guy we both love a lot, and that's going to be Dontavian Wicks, Andy's first flex player for the week. Yeah, he was, you know, a big sleeper this offseason, got off to a slow start, which kind of expected with so many receiving options on this team. Obviously, love going down doesn't help the passing game. But Love's first game back, Wicks, 13 targets, only five catches, but two touchdowns, a couple massive plays, you know, a couple drops, a little rough, but, you know, he kept going to him over and over again. Um, I think he'll get his chance again this week. Uh, Minnesota was first in pass defensive DVOA. This week they get the Rams, who are 31st against the pass, and especially are 31st against wide receiver twos, which... It's tough with the Packers wide receiving core, but it seems like Reed is definitely a guy you're going to play every week and a guy they're trying to get the ball. Dobbs lines up usually at X, and I think Wicks is probably going to wind up with the second most targets on this team, so I'd kind of put him there. If you f spent the fab on him this week, I, this is the matchup you play him in. Um, it's a great matchup, um, and yeah, if you picked him up, I think you're putting him in your lineup. Yeah, I mean, if you spent the fab, I, you... You picked him up to play him. I don't think you picked him up yeah. to put him on your bench. And, and flex is the perfect place to play him because you probably have some other pieces. Uh, I, I spoke about Wicks on a video the other day. I think it was in like a trade show. It was about Christian Watson. Selling Christian Watson was the thing I was talking about. But it really mostly has to do with Dontavian Wicks and the fact that he might not give this job back, to be honest. I, I, I think there's a chance... Yeah that they just see his production and, and it's going to start this weekend. Uh, so my first pick of the week, uh, it's going to be DeAndre Swift running back for the Bears. Uh, he basically stank for three straight weeks, finally had a good game last week. And I think it's going to continue again against Carolina this week, who is one of the easier teams to run the ball against uh, statistically so far this season. Uh, what I noticed with Swift last week is I felt like for the first three weeks, he was really trying to bounce everything and he was getting a little too fancy. Definitely put his head down a little more last week, but also the Chicago offense is just improving. You know, they have a rookie quarterback and it, there's going to be some growing pains to kind of get everything moving, but it clicked a little more last week. I'd assume against Carolina, it's a better matchup. I'm going to ride the hot hand with Swift from last week and go back to him this week in my lineup. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, you know, the Panthers not as historically bad as they were last year, where they were just the worst team in the league against the run, but still very bad this year. It's a great matchup for him. And, yeah, I did agree with everything you said there, So, which sucks. because you've been I hate waiting players. to play him. You, you probably still have him on your team, and, and you've been sitting there watching him a couple weeks, and now's the time. There's four teams on by. There's a lot of players on by. Uh, you know, I mean, Lions, Eagles, there are plenty of starters out. And if you're looking to fill someone in, uh, I think Swift's a guy. Going back to Andy, he's going wide receiver 
Uh, Coleman, Andy, what about him do you like this week? Well, I like the fact that there is probably not going to be a Khalil Shakir out there. So I think the rookie finally gets a chance to step up. Uh, They're playing in Houston, who have allowed the eighth most fantasy football points to wide receivers. Um, You know, 47 and a half point over under should be a high scoring game. Texans fourth in DVOA versus the run. So I'm obviously still playing James Cook, but I think it's going to be a little tougher sledding for him on the ground. And Josh Allen's going to have to sling it a little bit. At least that's the hope that this should be a good, fun game. And I think this is the time where he really gets his chance and gets to step up. And, you know, it can take a while for rookies to get going. We've seen it with a lot of rookies this year. Obviously, you know, Malik Neighbors figured it out pretty quick game two. There's some other guys who figured it out faster. But I think Coleman gets his shot. And this is, you know, a matchup where I want to start him. Yeah, I mean, the... The situation for this week specifically, if Shakir sits, this is a good game for him to step up in a time that they're going to need to probably throw the ball against the Texans, even though they're going to run the ball successfully, like you said. Um, This is definitely an upside play. I would say, you know, um, Coleman last week uh, watching the game, he had a couple back shoulder throws that he, he did catch and convert with Josh Allen. Um, I kind of compared him to Gabe Davis the other day, which I don't love, but he, <laughs> Gabe Davis had productive games, right? And, and it's kind of this ebb and yeah. flow where it's like, you know what you're getting into when you're playing these deep threat wide receivers with Josh Allen is like, it could be a hundred and two touchdowns and it, it could look a little worse, but Andy likes the matchup this week. And so we're going to roll with it. Uh, going another wide receiver and another rookie wide receiver, we're going to go Brian Thomas of the Jags. Uh, Jaguars 0-4. I, it's looked just absolutely disgusting. Um, I do think this might be the matchup for them to get their win. They're going up against Indy. Uh, Caleb Williams looked like a superstar against Indy a couple weeks ago. You know, like he threw for so many yards and all the receivers went off. I think you can throw against Indy. I'm curious to see how this game plays out, if it's Flacco or Richardson. But in general, Brian Thomas has been pretty good. He's had a a little slow streak for a couple games, but he started hot and he had a good game last week. And I think the Jaguars passing offense specifically, I'm not going to talk about their running offense. I feel a lot more sketched out about that. But I do think their passing offense is starting to click a little more. And I'm going with the upside play of Brian Thomas this week. Uh, especially just doubling down on what I said earlier, there's guys on by and you're having to start to fill in some of your flex wide receiver three slots with these upside players you've been holding on your bench, not wanting to cut. Yeah. And, you know, Brian Thomas has looked like a guy who deserved to be drafted in the first round. He's made some awesome plays and Indy has been bad against the pass. You know, I like this back-against-the-wall Jaguars team. Don't really like them for the season, but especially in this spot, divisional game, at home, must win. You know, it kind of feels like Doug Peterson's job is on the line. Like, I feel like that team's going to step up and really try and win one this week a little extra hard. And, uh, yeah, a little little teaser to who my uh, quarterback streamer might be, but I do like the Jags' uh, passing game this week. So moving on to Andy's last flex player for the week. He's going with a running back in the Sunday night football game. Andy, who are you going with? We're going with Najee Harris, who, you know, he's been one of my guys that I've I've, uh, put on here before, and he hasn't ever, like, truly disappointed you, but he hasn't ever had a big game, and I think this could be the week where that changes. Uh, They get to play the Cowboys in that Sunday night game. Dallas... Uh, let's see, fourth most points to running back, 32nd DVOA against the run, last in the league, 31st DVOA in receiving yards to running back. So terrible defending the rush, terrible defending running backs receiving. Um, you know, I think Pittsburgh's going to do what they want to do, which is play defense and try and run the ball. You know, I still think this is going to be a, a pretty good game. The Cowboys might be able to get something going a little bit, even on this good Pittsburgh defense. But I think if Pittsburgh wants to win, they're going to have to run the ball. And, you know, even in a deeper league, like I don't mind flexing in uh, Jalen Warren if you need to. 
He was probably out there on waivers just because his matchup is so good. He's coming back from injury. But of the two, I would definitely still play Najee. Yeah, I mean, even Jalen Warren, I think he's questionable right now. He didn't play last week. It looks like he's trending towards playing this week. Uh, And the big thing on this play for me is Micah Parsons, doubtful, probably not going to play. Demarcus Lawrence banged up last week. Don't know exactly know his status, but... In general, you know, they were already rough on defense with these starters in the lineup. And I think this is a spot. You know, this is it's a night game in Pittsburgh. I think they're going to play this pretty safe and just try to just kind of out-stealer the Cowboys. Kind of when it comes down to it. And that's going to go through <laughs> Najee Harris. So the last flex player for the week, I'm going with a running back, Jerome Ford. Um, they're going up against Washington. Cleveland Browns are. And Jerome Ford is kind of this player where when the script turns in his fashion, he gets the easiest PPR points of any player you've seen. (laughs) He has multiple games over five catches. I think he's an okay runner. I I don't think he's excellent um, as a just pure rusher, but he is their third down back. He's their hurry up offense back. And the Browns are going up against Washington, who has a very big over under uh, for their total score. And also Washington has just been on fire. So I think the Browns are going to have to throw the ball to stay in this matchup. And so for me, I think this is one of those Jerome Ford weeks. He's going to be involved. He's going to get some receiving yards and he has a chance to score. You know, he's not one of those guys that's going to pound the rock into the end zone always, but, but he has a chance and he always has a chance to make some bigger runs that kinds, that seems to be his MO generally. So for this week, I feel comfortable putting Jerome Ford in especially if you're having to dig deeper onto your bench for a starter. Yeah. And you know, one of the things you love to see in flex guys is Jerome Ford has nearly an 80% snap share in three of the four games that he's played this year. So like you said, he's on the field for third downs. He's catching passes. He's still getting rush attempts, Washington 28th DVOA against the run. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a good matchup for him, both in if they're down, he's going to catch it, and if they're up, it's an easy team to run against. So, Yeah, and it just so happens with the Browns that the reason Ford plays so much is that they are terrible. So they seem to be <laughs> down a lot, and then they have yeah. to throw the ball to him. Uh, so quickly to do uh, the segment we do every week on the show, we like to have some accountability from our picks for last week. Uh, so I'm going to put them up on the screen for you guys to look at. Um, and I'm just going to read off how we did. Andy had an absolutely killer week last week. Andy's picks from last week, Zach Moss, RB 17, Jordan Addison, wide receiver seven, Tony Pollard, RB 14, Geno Smith, QB eight, and Taysom Hill, a top five tight end kind of depends on your scoring, but he ran two touchdowns in 14.4 points. Andy went five for five. Uh, I went three for four. Cam Akers was a dud. He only got you 5.3. But Christian Kirk hit, Chuba Hubbard hit, Andy Dalton hit, and Zach Gertz didn't kill you. He got you seven out of tight end, which in this tight end landscape, if you told me I was getting seven points out of my tight end, I would just take that every single week and not play the game of having to figure out who to play at tight end, even though Andy and I are going to give you our weekly streamer picks for tight end. But that brings our hit rate. Uh, Andy's 11 for 17. I'm up at 12 for eight, 12 for 18. So in general, about you know two out of three. And and Andy and I are not picking smash that we think everyone knows they should play. We do try to kind of pick guys that have poorly performed in the past or or right on that line. So moving into our streamer part uh, of the show, Andy was teasing a little stack with one of my flex players, but who are you putting in at quarterback in week five, Andy? Man, we're, we're giving it to T law. Um, you know, just kind of reiterate Jags back against the wall. Uh, this Colts team has allowed the third most fantasy points to quarterbacks. So this is definitely a matchup where they can get the ball moving. I think they're going to be hyper motivated in a game that, you know, a, it's going to be tough to come back from 0 and 4. I don't know what their odds to make the playoffs are. I assume astronomically low, but I don't know. If you start 0 and 5, I mean, you start thinking about, you know, the ownership's like, well, who are we going to take top three in the draft next year? Um, so I think they're going to be up for this game, and it's a matchup where you can play the flow and locks, man. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's a back against your wall. It's a kitty in a corner man like you you're putting this jaguar (laughs) 
right up in that Thank corner, you. and they only have one choice, and it and it's to try and win this game, and it is a good matchup. I mean, the Rams didn't take down the Colts last week, but they did outgain them. So it it's in there, and I'm I'm speaking about a different game. They didn't play the Colts last week, but um, yes. I like the matchup. Rams played the Bears last week. I was thinking of something different. Uh, but my <laughs> quarterback for the week, we're going Justin Fields. Going to the night game. Justin Fields looked great last week. I love what he's doing on the ground so far. Um, I had a stat from, this was about a week ago, but Fields ran a bunch last week, so this still stays true. And what that is, and it's actually a little deceiving, and I think it would surprise a lot of you guys in that Justin Fields is actually running more rushing attempts per game this year with the Steelers than he did with the Bears last season, which just when you think back, I think we all thought he used to run so much with Chicago, and that's what really interested us in playing him as a quarterback, but he's actually running more attempts this year. He just has lacked some of those like really big runs that he had with Chicago, so he still does have the chance for those. But when it comes down to this dude is getting into the end zone on the ground and he's looking safe and managing the game through the air. And for fantasy football, I think that's a pretty good combination if you're looking for a upside streamer on any given week. And uh, with Andy's choice with one of his flex picks, we already talked about how the Dallas defense is super banged up. So I think Pittsburgh's going to put some points up. I mean, Pittsburgh putting points up is scoring in the 20s. They're not really one of these teams that's going to drop 35, 38 on you. But, you know, Justin Fields is going to be involved in a majority of those points being scored. So I feel good about putting Fields in as a flex streamer this week. No, for sure. You know, the Cowboys, especially with those guys out, um, you know, containing Fields, he's going to get his attempts on the ground. Just this entire Steelers run game, pound the rock. I love watching some good, old-fashioned, old-school, hard-nosed, hard-hitting football. We run the ball. We play defense in Pittsburgh. Let's go. And the old tiebreaker when it comes to a streamer or a flex player, man, you side with the guy who plays the night game so you get to watch him. So, Andy, going tight end. Tight end has just been so disgusting. So take any tight end pick with a grain of salt. But we're going to give you guys that are going to be sitting out on your waiver wire that have a chance to be usable or not kill you from the tight end position. Andy, who are you looking at this week? Going with Colby Parkinson this week. Uh, tight end is gross. You know, if he's there, I might play Tucker Craft over him, but he's taken in most leagues. So I'm uh, going with a guy who's available in 75% of leagues. Uh, Green Bay, eighth uh, most fantasy points given up to the tight end. 29th DVOA to the position. Uh, they have kind of struggled. They're getting Jair Alexander back this week is what it looks like. At least he's practicing today. And with the limited wide receiver options on the Rams, um, they're going to probably be throwing the ball somewhere. You know, Green Bay has been absolutely moving the ball, both through the run and the pass. Even, you know, their fifth DVOA for their passing offense, and that's with two games of Malik Willis, where he really didn't have, especially in that first game he played, barely even had to pass the ball. Um, so... I think the Rams are going to be down. They're going to have to try and throw it. Good luck, man. It's tight ends in 2024. So <laughs> good luck hitting that dart throw. Yeah, and then and you finally get one. You know, Andy nails it last week with Taysom Hill at the tight end position. This week, Taysom Hill cracked ribs. We don't know if he's playing again. It, it's just been yeah. that kind of year. Uh, for me, I'm going Tyler Conklin. Playing in the old London game, 8.30 a.m. for me in Texas. Love watching the London game. Uh, For me, Tyler Conklin's had a couple good games with Aaron Rodgers, a couple down games, going up against the Vikings, who are going to put some points up. Also, Vikings, one of the top 10 teams in zone coverage rates. So for me, I think that gives Tyler Conklin a chance to be involved in this offense. You know, I'm not guaranteeing he gets... Nine catches for 90 yards and a touchdown. This is a streaming tight end who's probably sitting on your waiver wire. But I think there is some logic that could lead me to play Tyler Conklin if I'm having to pick someone up off a bye. Or, you know, if I've been playing Dallas Goddard or something like that and I'm having to find someone on the waiver wire. 
Uh, I definitely mimic Andy's one. Another one would be Tucker Craft for sure. But I think he's a little more well-known. And he already had such a big week that I feel like he got picked up already off waivers this week. But uh, guys, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, hopefully the new recording setup works out. We're working through the kinks here, trying to figure out the best thing. Uh, and thanks, Andy, for joining us from his hotel room, man. It means so much. And we're trying to get you guys these picks. Uh, we're cruising. We had a great week last week. But, Andy, thanks for joining, brother. Thanks for and, having me, man. Uh, we will catch you guys next week for Flex Friday.